Hey there, my name is Mara Kasarik, and I absolutely love exploring online courses, passive income, and running a profitable online business. I'm an online course designer and strategist who left her nine to five in her 20s to start a small business, and that tiny little business has grown up over the years and now provides me a regular six figure income. On this podcast, I pull back the curtain of what it takes to create, launch, and run a thriving online course that helps your students achieve their dreams and allows you to grow your passive income too. Here you'll find launch strategy, marketing advice, curriculum design, and so much more about what it takes to create a better course. I'll also share a behind the scenes look at what it takes to start and run a successful online business. I'm sharing everything I've learned along the way and I'm not afraid to get honest about the things I'm still learning and navigating. If you're ready to impact other people's lives through online courses and make some money too, pull up a seat, grab a cup of coffee and get ready to dive in. Today we are talking about software and online course creation platforms. The number one question I get in my business every single day is what should I use to create and host my online course? Today, I'm breaking it down for you and I'm going to cover how to choose the right online course creation platform for your business. Spoiler alert, the answer is not the same for everyone. What features you really need to think about when you're choosing a course creation platform how to choose a platform that won't break the bank and force you to start spending a bunch of money. And then lastly, I'm gonna share my list of favorite course creation platforms to help you get started. Before we dive into this episode, I wanted to let you know about a free quiz that I have that will help match you with the right course creation platform. If you go to marakasarik.com slash quiz, or the link is in the show notes, you can take my free quiz. It'll ask you a few different questions about your business, the goals of your online course and your budget, and then you'll get a personalized recommendation on which platform might be a good fit for you. Online course creation platforms. So this is honestly a very tricky question. And there is not one right answer for what is the best online course software out there. When I say online course software or online course creation platform, I'm talking about platforms like Kajabi, Kartra, Teachable, Podia, Thrivecart, Thinkific. There are a lot of these online course creation platforms out there. And basically it's the space that hosts your online course So it's the area where your lessons are uploaded, your students go to log in, and they go through the course. Depending on the software you choose, there might also be other features built in like email marketing, sales pages, landing pages, affiliate program management. It all kind of depends based on which software you choose, what all of the features are going to include. I'm going to put a disclaimer on this episode before we really get into the heart of talking about how to choose a platform and which ones are the best. Do not overthink this decision. Most people overthink choosing the software they want and they really let it hold them back from ever having a course that allows them to help people and grow their passive income. Choosing and purchasing software should not be the first thing you do when you decide you want to make a course. Most people, it is the first thing they do because it's a very tangible action step. It's a lot less intimidating to say, oh, I'm going to go research online course software today over planning an outline, planning a syllabus, (laughs) recording the videos. But it's not the thing you should be spending your time on. You should be spending your time actually planning and recording the course before you get into the software. I have seen so many course creators who, first of all, waste a bunch of time choosing the perfect online course software. So they will spend months and months researching and they just can't make a decision about what to pick. And then when they finally do pick, They subscribe and they start paying and then it's three to five months before they're even in the software using the course creation platform. So don't do this first and don't let yourself get overwhelmed by this decision. I want you to be really careful of not choosing a software 
that you will want to be married to forever. A lot of people think, I have to choose the perfect software. It has to be the software that will work for the next 10 decades. And because of that, they spend so much time overthinking it. At this point in my business, I've worked on over 150 online courses over the last five years. And most of my clients, especially those who have had a course for three or more years, end up changing software at some point. So don't be intimidated by this idea that you have to choose the perfect software and you can never change your mind later because you can change your mind later. It is a lot of work to transfer your course to a different software, but it's not impossible and it's really not a big deal. It happens all the time and it's really normal for your business to change, for the needs of your students to change, and then you might pick a different software. So my best advice, do not procrastinate this decision. It's going to feel a little overwhelming at times and that's okay, but any software is going to work and it's going to allow you to get your course out there into the world, which is the important part. That's what we all want. So just pick a software and go from there. You can always change your mind later. So let's talk about what you need to consider when you're choosing a course creation platform. And there's a few things as you are researching different course creation platforms that I want you to keep in mind to help make sure you choose an online course platform that works for your business. You don't just wanna choose something that works for other people or something you've seen that's popular online because it might not have the features that you personally need. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to think through is your budget. And this one is really important because online course software can really vary. There are cheaper options and there are really expensive options. And if this is your first course or you're newer to the course creation process, you can spend a lot of money paying for software that you don't really need. So I think it's important to think about your budget. Is your course currently generating income? If it's not and you haven't even launched the course yet, you're probably going to want something that's a lower cost option because that's going to give you more freedom to do other things in your business like launch marketing, ads if you want to do that, hiring support. If you're spending all of your money on the software, it makes it harder to focus on building and growing your course. Now, on the other hand, if you have a course or you have previous courses that have brought in income and you have lots of students, that might be the time where you're thinking, oh, it might be time to upgrade to a software that costs more, but provides a better student experience. So be realistic about your budget. There are all different price points and we're gonna get into talking about some of those, but a lot of people jump into the really expensive ones thinking it'll be the best experience in the world and it's not always the case. And often, if you're newer to the online course world, you don't need a lot of those advanced features that some of the higher end platforms offer. Something else you're gonna to wanna to think through are your long-term goals and plans, especially around how many courses and programs do you want to have? Because a lot of these course creation softwares limit the number of courses that you can have or they charge you based on how many courses or products you have. Most of them will include you get three courses or three products. And then anything above that is an additional cost. So if you're someone and you're just going to have one signature course, that can work really well for you. But a lot of business owners end up having a lot of mini courses or they have different variations of their courses that end up counting as different products. So that's something to really be mindful of as you are researching different platforms of keeping in mind what your long-term goals are. And you don't have to have all the answers right now. But you don't want to choose a platform that's affordable when you have two or three products, but then the cost really jumps up when you have six and you know you want to have six at some point. The next thing to think through is how user-friendly do you need the software to be? So this is basically, 
Are you going to DIY everything? You're going to be the one uploading the videos in the course, uploading all of the email sequences, all of the landing pages, or are you going to be someone who is outsourcing all of that? And on top of that, are you someone who is tech savvy, you find it really easy to learn new platforms, or are you someone, which this is totally okay if this is the case, that tech is a little harder for you and you know that if it's complicated to use the software, you're not going to be able to do it. So that's something to keep in mind because I see a lot of people, they don't take into account who's going to actually be working in the software. Is it you? Is it your team? And what's your level of using tech? Because some of these online course creation platforms are easier to use than others. So if you're someone who gets frustrated having to watch YouTube videos or you find it frustrating to figure things out, that's just something to keep in mind that you might want a platform that's more simple to use, that has really good customer service, so that way you're not wasting a bunch of time and money pulling your hair out. You also want to consider what kind of student experience you would like to offer. This is an area I see a lot of people don't think through, but it's really important. A lot of people spend their time thinking through all of the stuff that happens before people buy the course. So like the launch, the sales page, all of the assets to sell the course, but you also want the people who buy your course to have a really good user experience. So you want it to be a platform that is easy for your students to use, easy to log into, easy to view the videos, easy to navigate all of the lessons. That's something that's really important to keep in mind and it really impacts the success of your course. And then another area, as you are looking at different course creation platforms, are what marketing tools do you need to be included in the software? So I briefly mentioned that some of these online course platforms will include things like email, sales page design, managing your affiliate program, and it all kind of varies, but you want to keep in mind, what do you really need? If you already have an email software in your business that you like, like if you're already using ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign or Flowdesk, and you like your email already, then you don't need to worry about having a software that includes email. But if you have no sort of email software, you might want to choose a software that includes email because it'll allow you to pay for everything at a lower cost and set things up more simply. And there's no right or wrong answer here. Everybody's tech stack ends up looking a little bit different, but you just want to be thinking through where am I going to send emails? Where am I going to host the sales page? And then do you need any other features like quizzes to sell the course or affiliate management to help you have affiliates who sell your course? There's a lot of different features like this and a lot of different rabbit holes that you can go down. So you don't want to buy an online course platform and then realize, oh, I really need it to have email and it doesn't. So that's something that's very important to keep in mind. So if you've thought through all of that and you're still feeling stuck about which online course creation platform to choose, I have two hacks for you. The first thing you can do is think of a course that you personally have taken and you really enjoyed the student experience. So what courses did you find were easy to navigate as a student? It was easy to log in. It was easy to go through the lessons. Maybe there was an app or there was an additional way to access the lessons that made it really easy to go through them. So you can go back and look at courses that you have really enjoyed as a student. The other thing you can do is choose a business mentor or a friend and go with whatever they use. And this one be careful about because your business is not the same as other people's businesses, especially if you choose someone who's farther ahead of you in business and maybe they have a course that has hundreds or thousands of students you might not need the same software that they use, but I do find it helpful sometimes to pick one or two people and look at what they use and then just 
go with that because you can spend forever making the right decision and there really is never a right decision, honestly. I do really want to advise you against crowdsourcing your decision. Do not go into a Facebook group and ask what is the best online course platform because you will get hundreds of responses and they will all tell you different answers and you will end up feeling more confused than ever because people are going to tell you all sorts of different things that they hate this platform or they love this platform and you really don't know behind the scenes if they are someone who is really good at tech or they really hate tech or they just had a bad experience with a platform five years ago and now it's different. So try to avoid asking a bunch of people. If you need to ask someone for advice, pick one or two people Ask them about their experience with the platform they have used. It really helps if you have specific questions to ask as well, just saying, hey, what's the best course creation platform? It's really generic and not particularly helpful, and it'll just end up leaving you confused. Now I wanna talk about budgeting and not spending a ton of money one of the biggest sabotages I see all of the time is people overspend on their online course before it's launched, especially on the software area side of things. So I want to talk you through three ways that can really help you save money in the course creation process. Number one, I talked about this a little bit, but don't buy or subscribe to your software before you're ready. Wait until you are actively filming the content in your course or you have finished filming it. You should be able to subscribe or purchase the software and then immediately you have something to upload. Most people subscribe to a free trial or they purchase the software, but they're not ready to do anything with it yet. And then it just ends up being wasted time and money. You don't get to actually take advantage of the free trial. So purchase your software when you actually need it. There's no reason to do it super far in advance. Number two, take advantage of free trials. Most online course creation platforms offer some sort of free trial, usually between two weeks to a one month trial. Use those. I actually have a page on my website if you go to maracasarek.com slash free trials and it lists out a bunch of the free trials in the online course creation platform. I regularly update it with new offers and discount codes so that you can take advantage of them. You can also ask a company for a longer free trial when you get closer to the end. Now, they might not say yes, but it doesn't hurt to ask. And this is something I have done multiple times where I'm just starting to use the software and maybe I didn't have time to use all of the features that I want to. So I will email the company and just say, hey, I think this software is the right fit for me, but I haven't had time to really dive into affiliate management or I haven't had time to look at your sales page builder can I possibly have an extension on my free trial? And a lot of the times those companies will say yes, not always, but it can be really helpful to get a couple of extra weeks to really play around with the software, decide if it's the right fit, and it's also nice not to have to start paying right away. And then my third tip is look for platforms that have a one-time fee. There aren't a lot of these out there, Thrivecart is one of the biggest ones currently where you can pay once, you get access to the software forever, and then you're not stuck paying a monthly fee. Other platforms will sometimes have a yearly fee that you can pay and that'll give you a discount. And I do recommend doing those if you know you like the software. I usually don't recommend doing it from the beginning, even though it's a little cheaper. A lot of the times you might start using a software and realize, ooh, I don't really like this, or this is kind of hard to use. So usually I'll wait two to three months and just pay the monthly price, and that's what I recommend to clients before we decide to pay the annual price. Let's talk about actual online course creation platforms 
and which ones are my favorite. For reference, I've been in the online course world for over five years, and before that I worked in corporate curriculum and education, so I've used and tested basically every single software out there. I also take on corporate instructional design contracts, which is where a large company needs an online course, and they use completely different software than we use as entrepreneurs or small business owners, but there's a lot of educational standards and really important factors that larger companies think about that smaller entrepreneurs don't always think about. And I find it really helpful to have that as a frame of reference of kind of seeing what corporate companies are using and what's working for them. So this list isn't going to be in any particular order and it's probably going to change as time goes on. My top recommendations change year to year and what I thought was a great software five years ago is now totally different because new ones come on the market, companies change their features, they change their pricing, so it it varies. But I'm gonna give you a list of what are my favorites right now, what am I seeing work really well for my clients. The first one is Thrivecart. Thrivecart is traditionally a checkout platform where you sell digital products but they launched Thrivecart Learn a few years ago and they have continued to make improvements to their online course platform. What I love about Thrivecart, first of all, the price. Right now it is $4.95 for Thrivecart for lifetime access. So that means you pay once and you get to use the software for the lifetime that the software exists. There are some additional upgrades you can make like Thrivecart Pro, which I recommend if you have an affiliate program for your course. There's also Thrivecart Learn Plus, which gives you a few additional online course creation tools and management. It's helpful. It's not something you absolutely need to get started. So for $500, you could get your online course hosted for years and years, and that's huge. Most course creators spend about $2,000, often even more than that, sometimes a little less. So if you can have a one-time fee, it really helps the bottom line of your business and it gives you the resources to support your course in other areas. Other things I really like about Thrivecart, it's really easy for students to use. It's very easy to navigate the courses inside the way they list out the lessons. It's in a list sequence, so it's very easy. It's almost like a checklist that students can go through and they can access all of the lessons and see exactly what order they should be going in. I also think Thrivecart is really easy to use as a course creator. It's pretty simple to use. It's very user-friendly. Most people can go into the platform and without spending a ton of time watching tutorials, you can figure out how to get started. There might be a few things that you need to look up, but I find in general, most business owners can DIY it, which is very helpful. Thrivecart integrates well with a lot of other softwares as well, and they have a lot of native integrations, so you don't always have to use Zapier to integrate your course software with like email or Dubsado or different CRMs like that, depending on what your business needs. I also really like that it's super easy to sell other digital products. So you can have your online course, you can have multiple of them, You can also sell like PDFs or templates really easily. And that's nice because some online course platforms, either it's really hard to sell just a product. So something that is not a full course, they're not really set up for that. Or it's really expensive to add on additional products. So I like that with my Thrivecart clients, If we have an idea for a product we want to create, we can do it pretty quickly because the software allows us to do that. Some things that are not the best about Thrivecart, and I think it's important to be aware of these things. At this time, there's no community forum in Thrivecart Learn or commenting feature. So a lot of online courses allow students to comment 
underneath the video lessons. That's a very common feature. That's not something that Thrivecart currently offers. I do think they will add it at some point because it's a pretty basic feature that most people want. Thrivecart also doesn't include a lot of additional features. So you can host your online course, but you cannot send emails. So you're going to need another software like ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign. And there's a few other additional softwares you might want. So that's something to keep in mind because other online course softwares include things like email. And then something else to be kind of aware of is there are limitations on your sales page design. You can design a sales page in Thrivecart. I do it all the time. You can make it look great, but there are some limitations on exactly what you can do. So if you want this perfectly imagined sales page where you can put things in all sorts of different spots, Thrivecart probably isn't the best for your sales page, but I see a lot of people use Thrivecart for their course and then the actual sales page is hosted on their website, which can work really well and is often better for SEO anyway. For most people starting out, especially if this is your first course, I think Thrivecart is a really great option. It's very affordable. It'll allow you to upgrade in the future if you need to. It's very easy to sell products. And I think it's one of the first course creation platforms to be looking at today. Number two is Kajabi, which you've probably heard of Kajabi. They have an amazing marketing department. They are great about getting the word out. And there are a lot of reasons why I love Kajabi. First of all, their customer service is amazing. I talk to their support team pretty often when I'm setting up online courses and I'm troubleshooting something or something goes wrong or I don't know how to do something. And out of every online course platform, their team has always been the most helpful. And I really appreciate that because sometimes you need help and you need someone to jump in and say, hey, you're looking in the wrong spot for this feature or the reason the video is not playing is because the file is corrupted. So I really like how amazing their customer service is. There's also so much you can do in Kajabi. You can host your entire website there if you want to. You can build all of your sales pages, all of your landing pages. They have a pretty robust email marketing platform. So you can send emails to your students, to your entire email. You can also do so much with Kajabi. You can host your entire website there. You can put sales pages, landing pages. You can send emails from Kajabi. You can host podcasts. It's a really robust platform. Kajabi is also the platform where I have experienced by far the fewest technical errors. So I never want to say that an online course platform is perfect. They all have glitches. Every single one I've ever used, at some point something has gone wrong. That is the software's fault, not mine. But Kajabi has very few. They have had a few over the years, but it's been very few and far between that the software has gone down or email has stopped working. And when those things do happen, I find that they are very responsive at fixing it, which is really important when you're running a course. Some of the cons with Kajabi or why I don't want to just say it's the best ever, always use it. It's really expensive. So it starts out at $150 a month and it goes up from there. That might not sound like a lot initially, but I've seen a lot of people pay for Kajabi for months and months and they aren't using all of the features inside of it. And it, it kind of becomes like a drain on their business. It also gets expensive the more products you have. So if you have more than three courses or more than three products, the price goes up. They also charge based on email contacts. So depending on how many people you have on your email list, it'll get more and more expensive. So it's just something to be very careful of. Most people, when they're first starting, don't need all of the features with Kajabi. They're great. It works great. But I just think be mindful of your budget so that way you don't go over budget and feel really stressed out about creating your course. Another con is it's a more difficult platform to use as a business owner. The way you set up courses and you set up sales pages, it's kind of confusing. It works really well, but it takes a lot of training and learning to know all of the ins and outs of this is how you upload a lesson 
or this is how you send a welcome email when someone purchases. It is not impossible to figure out. Plenty of people have done it, but if you are someone who feels frustrated by tech, I don't think it's the most user-friendly platform on the back end. And part of that is because they have so many features that it's harder to make it user-friendly because it's more high-end, there's so much you can do, but it is important to think about that and you don't wanna be frustrated every time you have to go into your course and change something. A lot of the people I see who use Kajabi end up having someone help them, like a tech VA or an online course designer, someone who can help you set things up so that way you're not wasting your time pulling your hair out, trying to figure it out all on your own. I think Kajabi is best for larger course creators. I think they do a really good job at managing courses that have a lot of students, like over a hundred or more, because that can get a little more complicated as more and more people join your course. I think it's also good for people who maybe have a team who can help them. But if this is your first course or you are newer to the online course world, it's probably not the first place I would look unless you just really enjoy the software and you feel comfortable using it. And then the next recommendation I wanna cover is Kartra. So Kartra, honestly, I have some mixed feelings about. I think Kartra's pricing is really good for what you get. They have continued to roll out features over the years, and it's a really good platform for someone who is just starting out on online courses. You get a lot for what you pay for. Some other things I really like about Kartra, their page builders, so where you build your sales pages and your landing pages, they're pretty easy to use. It's a drag and drop builder, so it's pretty easy to figure out how to DIY that. And design is kind of hard for a lot of people, so I find that very helpful that their builder is so easy to use. In general, I would also say Kartra is easier for people who are DIYing things. It's easier to figure out how to do things. There are some things that are a little more elusive and harder to figure out, but in general, I find it to be an easy platform for people to use. Some things to be careful of with Kartra, and this is why I have mixed feelings. Their customer service isn't that great. It has been getting a lot better, but if you have a problem or you don't know how to do something, you probably won't get an answer or you won't get an answer that will be very helpful. They do have online chat support. They have a spot where you can email in, but I have found that they're very slow to respond to things. It often takes several days to get a response from them. And a lot of the time I notice they don't quite know what I'm asking. They don't fully understand the question. And so they give me a response that's not helpful. Now I have found this easy to work around if you just Google and you experiment with things but it is something that can be very frustrating of not feeling like you can get an answer on things. And like I said, they're getting a lot better. They have definitely improved over the last couple of years, but it's an area that I still feel like they're lacking. I also think Kartra is a little more glitchy than other online course software. So sometimes every once in a while, the page builder won't work or an email won't get sent out. And that can be a little annoying. Like I said, this happens with every platform. Every software has issues. They have times where they go down. They have times where things get sent wrong. But I noticed Kartra has a few more of those than other online course platforms. That being said, the price is so good and you get so much included. You get email included, sales page design, quizzes, affiliate program management, like the list goes on and on. And for the price point, it's a really incredible deal. So I think it's a really good mix between Thrivecart and Kajabi. Those are currently my top three. I think you should check out Thrivecart Learn for its affordability and features. Kajabi is a great option if you want a software that will help you manage a large online course. And Kartra is kind of a happy in between if you're not quite ready for Kajabi, but you still want a lot of features. I'm also going to give an honorable mention to two other course creation platforms, which are Podia and Thinkific. 
Both of these platforms I think work really well. I've recommended them a lot in the past, but at this point, I think Thrivecart offers more for what you pay. There might be some specific features that you're looking for that Podia or Thinkific might have. So I think they're worth checking out, but they don't usually end up being in my top recommendation for people. There's truly no one perfect online course software. This is an area where you can spend a lot of time overthinking things and not taking action. So my final tip is to set a time limit for researching and choosing software and then just go with the software that feels right for you. You can always do more research. You can always do more testing. It's honestly kind of never ending. But the most important thing is that you actually get your course out there. Having the best software or the perfect software doesn't do anything if you haven't created the course. So remember, if you get stuck, I have that quiz at marakasarik.com slash quiz. It's also in the show notes, and there's a bunch of other links and resources of things I mentioned in today's episode, and it'll help you uncover the right software. I regularly update the quiz to add new questions and new software options as different things shift and change and new features come out. So choose the software that is right for your business, but no, you don't have to get married to it forever. You can always change your mind later. And that's okay because software is always changing and developing and they're releasing cool new features. Well, you made it to the end of the episode and I am so happy and grateful that you're still here. If any part of this episode was helpful and helped you with your online course or your own business, then you wanna hit that subscribe button. So that way you know every single week when I release a new episode, there is a brand new one that comes out every single week. I loved spending this time together and I will see you on the next episode.